Over production is one of the easiest forms of murder to spot, as it tends to result in what we commonly think of as waste. Overproduction means a product, part, or service was produced too fast, at the wrong time, or in too much quantity for the process. To understand the idea of overproduction, consider a basic fast food restaurant that offers hamburgers and french fries for lunch. The restaurant does not serve breakfast, and it opens its doors at 11 a.m. for the lunch crowd. If the cooks light up the grill at 11 a.m., then they might start the day behind, as it is possible that several orders will be placed immediately. However, if the cooks start making hamburger patties at 10.30 a.m., they might have patties that sit for some time before being consumed, which leads to customer dissatisfaction or waste if the patties are thrown out. Making 10 patties every 10 minutes starting at 10.30 a.m. is overproduction, the patties are being made too soon. What if the restaurant owners have done some research and they know the average number of orders between 11 and 11.15 a.m. on a Tuesday is 10 hamburgers? They might instruct the cooks to begin making patties at 10.50 a.m. and to make 5 patties every 10 minutes. The goal is to align patty making with customer orders so that wait times are reduced but customers are still able to enjoy fresh patties. By noon, the owners know orders tend to come in quickly, so they ask the cooks to make 15 patties every 10 minutes. By 2 p.m., however, the order traffic usually drops to 10 hamburgers an hour. If the cooks are still making 15 every 10 minutes, then the process suffers from overproduction. At some point, the traffic in the restaurant may call for made-to-order grilling, a process where the cook only makes hamburger patties as they are ordered to avoid wasting any materials. By understanding the traffic trends in their restaurant, the owners are able to estimate needs and create processes that reduce the amount of waste made in the kitchen while still meeting the quality demands of customers. Overproduction is most often associated with tangible outcomes from a process, though these outcomes don't have to be final or end products of said processes. Consider a business that prints business cards, stationery, invitations, and other documents. Perhaps this business offers a printing and mailing service. To complete this service, the company uses a machine-driven process that prints, folds, and stuffs mailings. The printer is capable of delivering 1,000 pages an hour, but the folding machine is only able to fold 800 pages an hour. Even if a customer wants 1,000 pages printed and mailed, the printer is overproducing if the first machine is set to operate at maximum speed. The process will take longer than one hour because it is contingent upon the slowest machine. Since the overproduction doesn't result in tangible waste, the printed pages will eventually be folded and mailed. The company's process owners have to consider other factors in order to decide if the temporary overproduction is detrimental to the process. Does the stacking of extra paper before the folding process create an extra risk for error? Does operating the printing machine at maximum capacity without necessity put unnecessary strain or wear and tear on it? If the answer is yes to either question, then there exists waste that should be eliminated from the process. Overproduction can also exist with regard to reporting, digital assets, and preparation for processes. Almost anyone working in a business environment is familiar with reporting requirements, just as almost anyone who has created reports knows the unfortunate truth that the information often goes unread. Creating reports no one reads, or creating highly detailed reports when an overview would suffice, is overproduction. Preparing equipment that isn't used in a process is also overproduction. Surgery centers often prepare machines, equipment trays, and operating rooms before shifts begin. The goal is to create efficient processes for any patient operation. Staff must also be able to access equipment quickly if issues arise during procedures. Preparing 20 trays of equipment on a day when only 10 surgeries are scheduled might be considered overproduction if there is no use for the extra trays. In some situations, such as the medical example above, processes might call for slight overproduction. If 10 surgeries are scheduled, staff might prepare 13 or 14 equipment trays. This way, if an emergency surgery arrives, or if an issue comes up with an existing tray, standby equipment is available.
by understanding nuances within processes and requirements. Six Sigma teams can better identify muda of overproduction versus overproduction that might be required by regulation or problem-solving policies. The key to eliminating overproduction is planning. In the examples above, you'll note that each solution came when the process operator understood the needs inherent within the process. When the owners knew how many orders were likely, they were able to plan to reduce waste. When the printer knows the capability of each machine in the process, he or she can plan for the most efficient printing run.